Hi, this is Patrick Adams with This Week's Mark in a Minute. This week we're going to look at 1987 compared to 2023. You ever get that weird feeling that you've been there before, you've seen it before, that things are popping up, that you, you recognize it happened way long time ago? I remember 1987 like it was yesterday. It was a really interesting period of time, an event that occurred. And it just reminds me so much of what has, what is occurring now over the last couple of years. And hopefully it doesn't end the same way, but you should be aware of it. I'm gonna walk through it very quickly. But first I thought I'd hit the, the, the update on the market uh, as we see it right now. Um, last week was the first time in a long time where we didn't see the earnings for the S&P 500 decline, the earnings estimates decline. So it was, uh, $223 a week before, it's still $223 this week. So that's a good thing. Um, happy to see it slow down the progress anyway. Um, and it felt like we got a technical shift last week. Um, kind of felt it in the markets, kind of, kind of felt it in my bones that, okay, maybe this is going to carry uh, higher. And that's what it hit me as, okay, this is similar to 1987 where you had a massive move in the market in the first part of the year. So the internals really advanced quite a bit last week, three to one advancing to decliners roughly. So that's very strong. That's, that's a good trend. Uh, the 10-year treasury got a little scary, went up above 4%. As you know, our thought is a 10-year treasury at four and a quarter or four and a half is going to cause some major major issues for the stock market as that's the major interest rate barometer that you use to value to value the stock market so it went to above four and then it came back below four kind of giving you the impression okay maybe things are set to, to move higher and there's numerous negatives that that we've talked about over and over again and that the market has focused on, um, such as declining earnings, as we mentioned, being too high, now they're maybe at a more reasonable level. Um, the earnings expectation going into the first quarter, they're much lower than what they were in the fourth quarter. So maybe we're not gonna see a similar decline like we did in the fourth quarter in terms of the estimates coming down. Um, the interest rates going up, the federal funds rate futures market has kind of discounted a lot of that, um, potentially getting to 550 on a federal funds rate. I don't see it going any higher than that, but, and, and that's currently in the market. And then um, the geopolitical concerns, um, those are well out there as well. So a lot of this negative stuff seems like it's in the markets to some degree, maybe not discounting it quite as much as we'd like to, but it's out there, it, it's, it's in the air, right? So the uh, sentiment is two to one bull, uh, bears the bull. Uh, so that's pretty darn negative. That's similar to what you, you see in uh, bear markets. Um, and so you know, we think that the bearish sentiment is actually a positive for the stock market. Now, here's the uh, graph of the S&P 500, it's the blue line here. And you can see what happened is that it broke through the 20 day. You see that there, broke through the 20 day, broke through the 50 day, the green line, and it entered day, it broke through the 200 day moving average, which is the purple line. 200 day moving average, average has been flattening out, so that's, that's a good thing. The trend is uh, getting a little bit better. Um, and the market blew right back above the 200-day, interday, above the 50-day, and now above the 20-day. So where is it going from here? Well, we see that there's resistance around 4170 on the S&P. We close today at 4060 roughly on the S&P. So that's a couple percent upside, and then maybe another couple percent to get to 4300, which is another. Uh, resistance level for the stock market. So resistance at 4170, resistance again at 4300, and the market should break the 200-day uh, moving average, get out of the way. That's, that's what our plan is, get out of the way. So we don't have too terribly much downside to see how far this will advance. 
Um, the 10-year treasury, uh, keep this in mind, the 10-year treasury at the bottom in 2021 um, went from roughly 50 basis points up to currently roughly 4%. So this is a 3.5% interest rate increase um, over a relatively short period of time. It's similar to what happened in 87, but in 87, it advanced at a, at a quicker pace in terms of the 10-year going up 3%. This move was more in a, much more in a percent terms, obviously, much bigger from, it, it basically went up darn near, you know, eight times, right? Eight times it went up. Um, and in uh, 1987, it went from 7% to 10%. 10% on interest rates is pretty darn good. Uh, that was one of the big problems that occurred in, in 1987, that bonds look so much better in stocks. We're getting a similar issue in the markets. Um, I just crack up when I see this picture, so excuse me if you don't like it, but I just thought it was pretty funny. And again, I remember that day. No, that's not me. <laughs> um, 1987, so what's similar to now? The technicals in 87 were really strong in the, in the face of weakening fundamentals. So we've had somewhat of a similar move in the markets, go to the fourth point down, a similar move in the overall markets over a different time period, but, but similar. So in, from January of 1987, to the peak in 1987, that was a 36% move, whopping move, right? And then from the high in the market, February 2020, not the low, the low is much, much more of an increase, but from the, from the high of 2020, so before COVID hit, the markets are up 42%. And I think that's a relative uh, that's a good comparison to make versus 1987. Um, valuations in the stock market, 1987, were roughly 18 times. Currently, they're roughly 21.7 times. Now, what we did is we took the way they calculated um, earnings back in 87, so they're similar, comparable to the earnings currently. You probably you have know that the forward forecast on earnings is roughly 18 to 18 and a half times earnings, so that's still high. But compared to 1987, 21.7, so higher than what it was in 87. However, interest rates were, were are are much higher back then than they are now. Um, I mentioned this before: big increase in rates in to, to uh, 1987. Uh, similar to current, and rates could probably still go higher. We're, we're not through that yet. If the Fed continues to raise rates, um, I would expect that the 10-year Treasury to go to uh, up from the low, roughly 4%. And that's a hard thing to defend yourself if you're a, if you're in the stock market. So looking back at 1987, um, here's that large advance that we discussed, um, and then the large decline, it allowed you to get out. You know, it started rolling over in August. I remember this so well. Rolling over in August, it declined in um, the week prior to the market falling. So it declined through here roughly 10%. And then come uh, Monday, um, October 19th, it fell over 20% that day, and it, it finally bottomed out, so down 28% from, from, from high to low. Um, that's something we want to guard against. So the 10-year Treasury, you can see, went in 1987 from 7 to 10, um, 3%. And that's a lot higher rate than, uh, than what we have currently. But it's similar in the sense that the economy and the stock market needs to adjust to the higher interest rates. So we think we, we need to be on higher alert uh, for this trend to possibly come into place of, of a decline in like similar to 1987. 
if the stock market continues to go up, like it feels it's going to do, it, it feels that way. Um, if we get a run into the first half of the year, I'd be extremely careful in the second half of the year. However, I've, I've, I mentioned if we roll over, break the 200-day moving average, our tactical, my tactical strategies will, will kick in, will protect the downside. Now, some stocks to consider to, uh, to protect yourself. Now, these are all great companies. J&J sells at 14 times earnings, has a 3% dividend yield, typically trades at 17 times earnings. There's a value in J&J. It's not going to blow up on you. So if we have a bear market, it goes to 13 or 12 times earnings. You buy more, but J&J will weather the storm and likely be a lot higher when the, when the markets turn back around. Bristol Myers, really cheap stock, high quality drug company, um, down similar like J and J. The, the large cap drug companies have pulled back quite a bit. We like Bristol Myers. Google, now they've been under pressure because of artificial intelligence, thinking that Microsoft has a better mousetrap. I don't think so. We've we've done more work on this. Um, Google will come out in, in May with uh, their products or announce what their products are. And I think they're going to be surprisingly really strong. And Google at 17 times earnings, probably the best earnings model I've ever seen. Great earnings, uh, great business model, very lucrative, cash flows like crazy. Google's a buy. Disney, all sorts of catalysts there. Um, we like it. They've got a great franchise. It's probably going to go nicely higher over time. Not a lot of downside in a bear market. 3M has been through a massive bear market. This thing's down 50%. Likely the bottom quarter for them will be this first quarter and then see a nice imp improving trend almost regardless of what the economy does. I say almost. Uh, very cheap stock, big dividend yield, 5%. Raytheon, uh, this is really well positioned, very well run company, high quality. Um, this is our geopolitical concern type of play, but we need to replace all those rockets they shot off over in the Ukraine. Dynex, this is a mortgage REIT, yields 12%. The guy that runs it is the most bearish guy I've ever met in my life in, in terms of his outlook of, of the world. He's positioned for it that dividend will very likely hold up in a bear market. Appreciate you watching Market in a Minute. Please hit like and subscribe. And if you want a hard copy, send us a, an email and we'll put you on distribution of the hard copy of Market in a Minute. Take care.